Good afternoon and welcome to this multi-location meeting of the Cabinet Scrutiny Committee on the 17th of April 2024. I am Councillor Phil Rogers and I will be chairing this meeting. Please could you ensure that your phones are switched to silent for the duration of the meeting. In addition, when asked to raise your hand, if members who are virtually viewing this meeting could raise your electronic hand. And for members in this room, please just raise your hand. Agenda item two, declarations of interest. Are there any declarations of interest, please? I cannot see any, so I'll move on to agenda item three. This is the minutes of the previous meeting. They're on um, pages five to 16 of the agenda pack. We'll take these minutes together. Are there any comments on the minutes, please? Councillor Timbold. Sorry, Chair, declaration. I'm Vice Chair of the Swansea Bay uh, City Deal. I don't know if I need to uh, give a declaration because the HAPS project is being brought up. That's fine. Thank you, Councillor Bowen. Uh, you don't need to. OK, thank you. Thank you. So we're still back to the minutes. Are there any comments on the minutes of the previous meetings, please? I can't see any indication, so we'll move on. Um, we feel these are an accurate record of the meeting, and I'm happy to propose it. Can I have a second, uh, please? Happy second, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Bowen. Are there any abstentions? I don't see no abstentions, Chair. Thank you, Alison. <coughs> if members do not indicate the contrary, I will take it that these minutes are approved. No indication contrary, Chair. So, yeah, minutes are approved. Thanks again, Asim. Agenda item four pre decision scrutiny. We now move to the cabinet board agenda. Agenda item six the audit wheel service user perspective. This is on pages 11 to 30 of the report. Officers, would you like to add anything additional to the report? Please. Just a brief introduction, please, Chair. Um, so Audit Wales undertook the national study on the use of performance information, and this was drilled down for this particular um, study mm -hmm. on the use of service user perspective mm -hmm. and whether the information that we collect from service users is presented to senior leaders to inform decision making. Um, as you'll see from the covering report, we don't fully agree with the recommendations made by Audit Wales. But we do acknowledge that there is more work to be done, and we are um, undertaking that piece of work over the next few months. Um, the organisation response form provides a succinct response to the recommendations made, and these have, this organisation response form has been accepted by Audit Wales. Um, in terms of user feedback, there are a number of examples where we collect the user feedback across the council. Um, a few examples. Um, tomorrow, there's a report going to social services, housing and community safety, um, the annual report on engagement and participation, mm -hmm. where we've engaged with service users um, to find out their voice, what is important to them, and support how the uh, use of services shapes services going forward. Um, we've got the uh, Children and Young People's Plan. There's been a consultation made recently um, and the number of um, feedbacks obtained. We collect information via the complaints, um, comprehensive complaints procedure, and this is collated and analysed um, to look for improvements that can be made. Um, similarly, via our customer services team members' feedback. So all this information is collected across the authority, but it's just our means of how we pull it together, and that's something we are working with Audit Wales on to ensure that the information is robust and also that it doesn't cause extra work for officers in pulling this information together. So it's just a quick overview, Chair. Thank you, Louise. Uh, we move now to members' questions, please. I have an indication initially from Tom Uh Dear David, thank you, Chair. Um, just before I go into the, the, the questions, in terms of um, the commentary around what we do or do not accept of the recommendations mm -hmm. from Audit Wales, is somebody able to explain um, what part of the recommendations we do not accept? Thank you. Thank you, uh, Councillor Percy. Please, please. Oh, no, no. Yeah, I'm happy to come in. Uh, do you have a question, Councillor Percy? I think in terms of, of, of the recommendations, it was quite a narrow uh, piece of work by um, by Audit Wales. Um, and the, um, uh, Louise has included the a national uh, piece of work carried out by them. So the feedback given to most rest of is, is, is very similar. I think in terms of uh, we, we don't quite agree with them, it's around the fact that we, we do create a significant amount of service user perspective information across the authority. So um, 
you know, what we need to do is strengthen how we put that together, as we've already said. So, you know, that's our kind of, our kind of, when we say we do not wholly agree with the recommendations, you know, we do believe that we do actually collect a significant amount of service user perspective, and maybe some of the directors who want to come in there to expand on, on what they do within their own directors, as Louise alluded to, there's a report going tomorrow with uh, Andrew Jarrett to scrutiny that details quite a significant amount of service user perspective that takes place within that directorate. And that is used to inform um, how they improve the services they deliver. So that was the uh, point made there, uh, Councillor uh, Percy. Yeah. Thank you, uh, Nywen. Councillor Percy. Yeah, th th thank you, Chair Dear Nywen, um, for that. Um, I, I, I think I understand the distinction you're making there, and and I think it's um, I think it's probably as patchy. I think in my experience of um, you know scrutinising performance data, um, you know, since being a councillor, I think we we perhaps do it better <laughs> in some areas than others. Um, but I think fundamentally it's around, <clears throat> it's, excuse me, it's not just about gathering the data, is it? It's about how it's used in the decision-making process. And I think um, perhaps you've touched on that uh, briefly there, but I think perhaps there's some areas where we're not necessarily um, understanding the value of, of a service user perspective when making um, decisions. Um, so just in terms of my two questions, I, I, I'm, Looking at the the actions and um, that we've got, um, which I just grabbed them on my page here from in terms of the organisational response. So there's our one, um, which is work is underway to identify service user perspective information, etc. Um, I think the two actions there under our one are, are quite sensible in terms of um, what we're setting out to do. But I think there might be some more work to be done. Just touching on what I've just said around that, making sure that. Um, senior leaders understand all all, all parts of the organisation understand the value of having that data and, and what it's for because it's one thing kind of saying we need you to gather this but I think they need to understand why it's important how we can help them improve on on their service and I think my reflection is in this report it talks a lot about um, talks about you know activities and outputs rather than impacts and I've definitely seen a lot of that as a councillor where we get a report back that says, yeah, we're hitting this this target or whatever it is. And it's a very much an internal perspective. And we're not actually looking beyond <laughs> beyond that our organization and to the members of the public and what their experience is. And I think that's a kind of that's a bigger cultural issue than a data gathering point. But I think that is maybe something we need to look at when we're looking at our organizational response. And I think there's definitely parts of the council that do that really, really well, because we've got some services that are very um, people centric, but where we've got services that are perhaps less people centric um, by their nature, I think we we can get very caught up in um, targets that don't relate to people's experience. So I, I just in terms of that R1, I think it'd be really good to um, just think about how everybody in the organisation understands the value and the importance. So that, that that's just some some my feedback on that. In terms of the quality and accuracy of the data, which is R3, um, there's a, a a uh, response there that we're going to engage with the internal audit service um, about checking uh, quality and accuracy of information. Um, but again, do we need to an action further back in the chain to make sure that that data is being gathered in the correct way in the first place? And I, I, I understand there's a need to audit and check it before it gets presented to senior leaders. But is there more work to do making sure everybody in the organisation is upskilled and understanding data well because I think some people are very good at doing their doing their jobs and their roles but data is a kind of very separate thing isn't it is how to gather data robustly and how to ask the right questions or how to how to do that in the right way um, and, I, and I just wonder whether both those actions R1 and R3 just need to be a little bit broader to make sure we're capturing perhaps the extent of what maybe I feel um, you know the opportunities are to improve this. Dear Chair, thank you. And you, Councillor Percy, can I have been nodding Yeah, you can hold Yeah, I think your, your points are valid. Valid, uh, Councillor Percy. Clearly, there is a significant amount of work that does take place um, across the authority, and there's been a significant amount of investment done over the last um, few years within the authority on um, the data analysis um, capacity to <coughs> digital services, um, and they've uh, undertaken a number and put on a number of. Uh, data analytics of course as well so we upskill uh, the staff across the department in, in their ability to um, create and analyze the data 
Um, I think it's very valid the point you make around, you know, the, the so what, you know, it's one thing to collect all the data to give us the assurances that we may be hitting the targets, but it's the, the impact um, our work is having as well. It's important for us to capture and there's, again, good areas of, 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 of work taking place across the authority that are already done. We just need to strengthen that across the board. Okay, well, uh, can I bring in our chief executive, Karen, as well? Yeah, if I, if I may just add a little bit of context to what um, Noelwyn has just said there, which I wholeheartedly agree with. Um, we've got quite mature data collection systems around things that we report on, um, and we've got um, groups of officers across the council who've got responsibility for that data collection and making sure that it is accurate. So we're not talking about things that are immature or new. We're talking about things that have been in place for very many years and they've been audited and tested over a, over a period of time. And we are confident in the systems we've got for bringing that data forward. The challenge we had from the auditors is, well, how do you know? Because once upon a time, we used to use the internal audit to dip check um, the accuracy of those data systems. We moved away from that because we were repeatedly seeing that there were no issues when we were auditing those systems. And we, we concluded there was a better use of the internal audit resource and continuing to check the same things and coming up with the same results all the time. But the challenge back is that they feel that we do need to be taking an additional assurance around it, which is why we've got that particular recommendation in this report. <laughs> I would say to you, in terms of you having an assurance as to whether the data you're seeing in reports is accurate or not, I'm confident that the data you get in is accurate. There's always going to be, a, you know, margins of error in any any system. But I think what we'll do is we'll run internal audit over it again and just check whether or not we've maintained that level of integrity within the data that we're reporting. And there are either any further action that we we'll need to take on it or one. So I, I don't, I'm not overly worried about that. But they, that's where they were coming from uh, when they made that um, recommendation. I think coming back to your first point then about um, you know uh, culture consistency across the organisation, when they undertook this survey, it's very very narrow the focus of this survey. So what they're really getting at, Councillor Percy, is going back to the days of service user satisfaction surveys. And if we actually say to ourselves, "Are we doing those routinely across every service in the council?" The answer to that is no. Um, so I think there is an opportunity as Noelwin brings forward proposals to further develop the council performance management system there's just be having conversations really about well how do we routinely make sure across the council we consistently understand now people's experience of using our service and we're then reporting on that in a way where it then is helping us to see where the next set of um, improvements need to be made and i do agree with your mm -hmm. observation that it is better developed in some parts of the council than others what I absolutely fundamentally disagree with the auditors on is that we don't understand um, how people are using council, council services, because I think we have lots of ways of understanding that, not least the inboxes of our councillors who fill up, you know, particularly around, you know, some of our well-used services. Um, and you're very quick to tell us when, you know, there are problems in there. So that's just one example. of There's many ways in, in which we... Uh, you know, understand how we've experienced our services, including the fact that we are residents ourselves and we use these services ourselves. So we're not sort of a dif distant group of people are we away from it. But I would accept that it's not consistent. And on the back of the pandemic, you know, during those years, we weren't really thinking about service user satisfaction surveys and performance management systems. We were thinking of very different things. But clearly, as we move in more now into steady state, we need to get back to those fundamental things that every organisation needs to have. So it's continuing to make sure it's doing the best that it can within the resources that it's got. So hopefully that's, you know, just a an additional bit of context, I think, around where the auditors were coming from. Um, but I don't personally think it's something you should be overly worried about. I think it's more in a continuous improvement box than in, in a box of we've got a big problem and we need to pile a load of resources into dealing with it urgently. Thank you, Cara. Very clear. Um, Councillor Booty, would you like to respond or are you happy with the response? If I can respond briefly, Chair, and I really appreciate that, that Karen, that was that was a really uh, helpful response, actually. And and it, it's it only a brief observation from me, just in terms of that, um, you know, as councillors, yeah, we absolutely do get lots of feedback from our residents and we often bring that into the scrutiny process as well. 
And certainly what I find is we often come up against the fact the organisation has this set of data and we might be saying, well, actually, our residents are telling us this. And the, what we often hear back from senior people in the organisation is, well, the data saying this or this is or we're hitting this target. So that's kind of OK. And I think that's where it is important to have, you know, a robust set of um, and a, a set of data from service users and the public within the organisation, because I think sometimes I can carry more weight than perhaps a councillor who might just be passing on a complaint if you catch my drift. And I think that's just an observation from me that I that I feel like I've I've experienced through through scrutiny over over you know a period of time. And I think that might be the value of of doing what you say there, Karen. Yeah. And I just tried to say I wholeheartedly agree with that as well. And I've been a an advocate for many years of members bringing their lived experience into scrutiny and, and using that to ask questions and putting items on the agenda. Because ultimately, you know, people get different experiences. Sometimes it's an isolated thing is there that's gone wrong and so you're probably right to say sorry and all the rest of it. But occasionally there are structural issues. You know, and I can think of examples I often use, the sideways policy went for many years ago, where it works perhaps for the majority, but there's a size of the minority that it doesn't work for. And I think that's a really powerful um, contribution that scrutiny can make by making sure those things that you are hearing about at community level, that it's filling up your inboxes, is not just dealing with them at a casework level, but when you've seen the same thing over and over again, put it on the agenda and let's look at it and make sure that there's a system change or a policy change that makes it better you know, for, for everyone. It's cost us less money as well. It's much cheaper to get it right first time than to put it right when it's gone wrong. Thanks, Karen. Is that okay, Councillor Percy? Lovely, thank you. I'll move on next then, please, to Councillor Carol Clement Williams, please. Thanks, Chair. Um, yeah, I, I've got to say, I, I do absolutely wholeheartedly agree with what Sean is saying. I thank Karen um, uh, for the response. But I, I have come up across the same thing over and over and over and over again in certain departments where, you know, I, I'm not won't mention a department. I think that may be unfair here. But um, you ring up and say, I've got another complaint about this. I've got another complaint about that. Or we'll sort it. We'll sort it. And they, they you know, they'll come out and they'll, they'll sort it. But there, there isn't. Um, the, the acknowledgement that it is a huge problem, because as Sean said, Oh, well, we, we're not, you know, if you have a look at our complaints, that doesn't say that. But we know as councillors, because that's what fills our inboxes up in uh, up, uh, day in, day out. Um, so that there, there can sometimes be pushback of a very negative response when all we're trying to do is to give that feedback. And if it was taken back to basics, uh, something can be done about it instead of just giving an excuse. Uh, and I'm not being disrespectful. I know officers work really, really hard, but sometimes they don't quite get it. And I think that where it comes back to the um, accepting the recommendation or not, I also believe that sometimes I, I and I know as councillors, we've got a job to do, but sometimes you ask for a certain amount of data and you're told, yes, it will come. But it doesn't, it doesn't, after that meeting, it seems to fall by the wayside. So it's about what data we're collecting and not whether it's accurate from my, from my, um, from my side of things. Yes, I, I, I believe that the data we get is totally accurate for what we're collecting. But what we need to ask ourselves is, are we collecting the right things? And um, are complaints as such that are coming from councillors being dealt with as complaints or are they just putting it right but it's not recorded I've been told it is but I, I doubt it from year and year and year of the same problems cropping up over and over and over again thank you Thank you uh, Councillor Clement Williams uh, and over to Carla Well I'm sure, mm -hmm. sure when Nigel brings the um, the proposals on performance management, you know, there'll be an opportunity for a good, healthy debate about whether we are addressing all these points that members are making, because I think it is really important um, that you have getting the information that you need to scrutinise properly. I think on the latter points there, Councillor Kevin Williams, if you're not getting um, officers following up on things they've agreed to do with, and if you're seeing um, a repeat of um, problems that have been spot treated, then they're recruiting. My advice would be to take that to the director of the relevant directorate. And if you don't get a satisfactory 
response from the director, then you need to bring it to my attention mm -hmm. because I'm not aware of what you've just said in terms of any specifics. And if I were made aware of it, I would do something about it. So, uh, um, you know, and with respect to colleagues as well, if people are in busy operational services, I can kind of see how they might um, not get back to some of those things inadvertently. But if they're important, then please don't just accept that. Bring it forward to the director or bring it to my attention, because if they're significant issues, then we need to be uh, making sure that we're, that we're getting attention. Thank you, Karen. That's quite reassuring. Uh, Councillor Clement Williams, would you like to come back? Just to thank Karen for that response. And um, funny enough, I had made an appointment to speak to a director on a head of service recently, but I wasn't very well, so I, I'll take that back up. Uh, but thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Councillor Clement Williams. Are there any other questions on this item, please? No? I, yes? No. I can't see any indications. So um, the recommendation is listed on page 13 of the Cabinet Agenda Pack. I'm happy to propose it. Can I have a second, now, please? Second. Thank you, uh, Councillor Bolsuri. Mm -hmm. Can members please indicate if they wish to abstain? See no abstentions, Chair. Thank you, Alison. Uh, members, if you do not indicate to the contrary, then I will take it that this decision is supported to Cabinet. I can't see any indication of the contrary, which has the recommendation supported. Thank you, Alison. We move back now to the scrutiny agenda. Agenda item five, the forward work programme 2023-24, which is on pages nine to ten. This item is for noting unless people have got any uh, things they'd like to say on it. Yeah, any indication, so we'll move along. We duly noted. Agenda item six, urgent items. Again, I have no urgent items today. Agenda item seven, access to meetings. To resolve to exclude the public from the following items pursuant to section 100A, parts four and five of the Local Government Act 1972 and the relevant exempt paragraphs of part four of schedule 12A of the above act. I'm happy to propose it. Can I have a second, please? Thank you, Councillor Galsworthy. Can members please indicate if they wish to abstain? Thank you, Alison. Members, if you do not indicate the contrary, then I will take it that access to the meeting is agreed. And we will go into private session. I can see no indication of the contrary, Chair, so we will now go into private session. Thank you. Can I just check 